Let's travel to 8000 BC in Sumer, where clay tokens molded into an envelope were exchanged in order to deliver a number of goods by a certain date. These time frames were decided by the date on the envelope and the tokens themselves. You know, the sellers promised to deliver the asset at a certain date. The mechanism worked in the same way that a forward contract would work today. In ancient India too, actually, at around 320 BCE, Kautilya, who was a teacher, a philosopher, an economist, a jurist, and a royal counselor, he authored a text called Artha Shastra. You've probably heard of it. In this, he discussed the method for determining the the price of standing crop that will be harvested at some point in the future. He used this technique to pay the farmers much in advance. Thus, if someone needed to buy or sell grains, they would agree on the price and the delivery date in advance and they would sign a written contract, thereby structuring a true forwards contract. Forward contracts are still in use today, although only among a select group of parties, such as, say, companies or banks. Now, that is the simplest form of derivative. Derivative means that the asset derives its value from an underlying asset. And the underlying could be anything. It could be a stock, a bond, a commodity, or even currency. There's also another derivative contract called futures. Over time, futures contracts have become the trader's preferred option. The futures are somewhat similar to the forwards. Therefore, I believe the best way to learn about futures market is to first learn about the forwards market. So let's look at an example to understand how these contracts actually work. Hi, my name is Pratik Singh, the founder and CEO of LearnApp.com. And in this module, we're going to learn about futures. Now, I'm sure you've heard about derivatives before and futures falls under derivatives. Well, options are also part of it. But in this module, we're going to talk about just futures. Now, before we talk about futures, why don't we go back a little time and talk about forwards, which is like a predecessor to the futures market today. It'll help set context and make it easier to understand why futures are different and why we even need them. So a forwards contract is an agreement between two people. In fact, let me show you how this works with these props. We have a buyer over here who wants to buy the gold and we have a seller so in this contract, the actual transaction being taken place will be 30 days from now, which is sometime in the future, right? 30 days, where the buyer pays cash in lieu of getting the gold. Now, there are three possibilities at the end of 30 days. The price of gold could have gone up at the end of 30 days. It could have gone down at the end of 30 days, or it could have just remained sideways. So at the end of 30 days, if the price of gold went up, Think about the buyer. The buyer wouldn't want to pay a higher amount and is less likely to actually go through with the transaction. So that's one issue with this if the price goes up. But of course, the seller loves it because now the price is higher. So he's likely to go ahead with the transaction. But this is a mismatch and is a problem. But before we discuss that, let's talk about if the price of gold went down, what would that mean? Well, in that case, the seller would be less likely to execute this order and the buyer would think, hey, the price of gold is slightly cheaper. And finally, if the market or the price of gold was actually sideways, then maybe in that situation, both of the parties will actually go ahead with executing the transaction. But you know, this isn't the only problem with a forwards market. Now, there are two risks with this kind of transaction. One, we have a counterparty risk and two, we have liquidity risk. So with the counterparty risk, as you've seen over here, in some situation where there's volatility, one of the people in the transaction may not honor the contract or the transaction just won't go through, as we discussed here. The second risk is liquidity risk. Now, this means that the seller over here will just not have the gold and will not be able to fulfill his obligations of the contract. Because of all of these risks, it becomes difficult to actually execute and use forward contracts practically, which is why the solution is a futures contract. And we'll understand how futures contracts eliminate these risks in the next video. Key takeaways from this video are 